Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I got a rant for you today. Indiana has just finished off the Dallas Wings 110-109 to finish with at least a 500 record. They have clinched the sixth seed, and they play their season finale at Washington. They have an opportunity to finish 21-19, and which was my prediction. <clears throat> coming out of the break today would go 21 and 19. So here's hoping to my, my prediction coming true. I'm a little bit under the weather, so bear with me a little bit. Before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Been away for a couple of days in terms of video production, but I will have a bunch of stuff coming out today. Caitlin Clark shatters the rookie record for scoring today. She hits a three. To break Simone Augustus's record at 744. Caitlin Clark now sits atop the throne for most points ever by a rookie. And she did it in emphatic fashion with 35 points, eight assists on 10 of 22 shooting, six of 14 from three, nine of nine from the line. <clears throat> this was one heck of a Irritating game, to say the least, when you watch it from a perspective of the bad habits of the Indiana Fever rear their ugly head again over and over and over, and they escape with the win. Kelsey Mitchell drops 30 on 12 of 21 from the field, 6 of 12 from 3. Leah Boston adds 15 points, 6 assists, and 6 rebounds. The two biggest shots of the game, though, were Damaris Dantis hitting a couple of threes, one from the corner, one from the wing, <clears throat> that which gave the Fever what seemed like an insurmountable eight-point lead with under a minute to go. But as it is with the Fever constantly, they can, never, they can never do things the easy way. They have this inability. It's a, I'm sorry, there was a minute six left. They have this inability to do things the easy way, to finish games off the right way. No, it always has to be difficult. So what happens? Natasha Howard hits a bucket with 59 seconds left, and Caitlin Clark gets loose with the ball. She makes a bad pass on a screen. Arika Ogumbawale gets the steal, goes all the way to the rim, and for some illogical reason, Lexi Hall decides to foul her. Yes, it was a foul, Lexi. Let her go. Instead, you foul her, and now it's a three-point game with 41.1. And then another turnover by Caitlin Clark. You know, this is the thing that she has to truly look at and, and fix because she gets loose with the ball late in late game situations. They're going to attack you. You cannot make these types of plays to let teams back in the game. And this is on her. Those two turnovers were just unacceptable. You cannot commit those turnovers like that. But again, Caitlin Clark gets to shoot two free throws, makes it 108-103. And again, you're saying, the game should be over. No, not that's not the style of Indiana. Yes, Agumba Wale hit some ridiculous three-point shot off one foot over Kelsey Mitchell. That shot should not get off. Why is that shot even getting off? <clears throat> I, you know, it's one of those things that's just it's utterly exhausting. And thankfully, Aaliyah Boston hits both of her free throws because Satu Sabali hits a three at the buzzer to make a 110-109. This game was back and forth. Dallas was whooping Indiana early on, as they seem to always do when these two teams play each other. And Indiana always seems to have to make a comeback, which they do because Dallas defensively is terrible. They can score a lot of points, but they can't defend a parked car. But you know what? Indiana can't defend a parked car. But in but but credit to Indiana, they fought, they fought, they fought. Caitlin Clark had a career scoring night, thirty five points. She just has to clean up that end of game situation because it's a lot easier to talk about it in a win. But when you play better teams, that loses basketball games. She's got to clean that shit up. Two turnovers in the final minute cannot happen. It's how you let a nine point lead or an eight point lead disappear i mean they had a nine point lead <clears throat> they had a nine point lead at uh 97 88 she hits a she hits a free throw and then you have 
more defensive lapses, more quick shots that you probably shouldn't take from, uh, you know, <coughs> you know, you have Aaliyah Boston misses a point blank uncontested layup on a pass from Caitlin Clark. Let's see Hall end of the third quarter. Perfect pass from Caitlin Clark by herself. She breaks a layup. Didn't even hit the damn rim. These are the types of things that they got to clean up. You cannot keep missing these easy buckets. I know it's the way of the WNBA. I know this shit's, that's how this shit works. But as usual, the Indiana fever. Oh, I was, you know, Christy side shows her incredible coaching ability. And, you know, I'm being very sarcastic. I mean, at one point, she's running a lineup out there with Caitlin Clark and four bench players in the fourth quarter. Now, to their credit, Caitlin Clark took over the game and is what and she's why they had that 97-88 lead. You know, Caitlin Clark hits a bucket to make it 90 to 86. She hits another, she hits a three to make it 93-88. She hits another three to make it 96-88. And then she hits a free throw. That entire run was Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark put them on her back in that in that stretch. She put them on her back because none of those women are gonna shoot the ball. They don't want to shoot the ball. <clears throat> they don't, they won't shoot it. And, and and you're like, how long are we how long are we gonna run with this lineup? Because that lineup ran from the entire fourth quarter. She ran this lineup until there was about four minutes to go in the quarter. Let me see here specifically. When did Kelsey Mitchell come? Kelsey Mitchell and Leah Boston re-entered the game at 315. She had Kelsey Mitchell and Leah Boston sitting for seven minutes of the fourth. Why? This wasn't a matter of defense that did this because they didn't have their bet. They, they didn't have. Uh, yeah, they had Fag Benley in there and they had um, Lexi Hull in there. But you have two other players. I mean, Dantas is not all that great defensively. Erica Wheeler, Erica Wheeler did a decent job, um, and I and I thought probably you could have put her on Tarika Gumbuale more in the game. But I, I don't understand how you have them sitting for that long that long of a stretch. This is a scoring game. Yeah, you need some defensive stops. I would. I, I was very. It's hard to un, it's hard to watch this at times and, and sit here and say who should be in the game with this team anymore because. You have Fag Benley, who's inept offensively for the most part. She can't play on offense. You have Dantes, who's deficient defensively. So if she's not hitting shots, why is she really in the game? Although, again, with the game, with the, with the game at uh, I mean, it was, it was 97 96. Kelsey Mitchell hits a big three. Sabali hits a shot, and then on a on a, on a pick and pop, pick and pop with uh, I know that was the one to the corner. Uh, that was the one to the corner where Dantas hits the corner three on a pass from Caitlin Clark. That was a big, big shot with a minute 32 left. Then it was a then it was a pick and pop that got um was a I'm sorry, it was a drive that got uh the ball over to Lexi Ho, who swung it back out to Dantes, who hits the three to make it 106 98. And you're like, okay, this game is over with, but no, it's Indiana, so they're gonna screw around and mess it up. This team is incapable of, of enjoying prosperity, they have to find ways to do things that just make no freaking kind of sense. And that's when Caitlin went in her little turnover thing going on there. And I knew, and I said to myself, I'm watching this game. I'm saying, they're going to start jumping you. They're going to start jumping you. You got to be clean with the ball. You can't be sloppy with the ball. You can't be loose with the ball. And then exactly what happens, loose with the ball, two turnovers. <clears throat> but this game is just like every game that these two teams have played up and down, up and down. I mean, God dog was 59, 57 at halftime. You know, uh, the wings went up by 12 in the first. I think it was the first. They're up 12. Yeah, they're up 12, 30 to 18. Early on, Melissa Smith does her little stuff. And, of course, she can't stop a, well, she can't stop a nosebleed. So she's going <clears> to <throat> make all her defensive errors. And they're going to run plays through her and whatever the hell else. But overall, I mean, you watch this game, and once again, you're looking at a situation where at least Christy Sides called the timeout in this in the first half. At least she finally called the timeout. That was at uh 12-6, I think it was, or 12, 16-8. 
around there. She called the timeout. And the, yeah, she called the timeout 16-8. I was like, holy shit, she actually called timeout. She didn't let it get completely blown out, blown away. But, yeah, once again, you're watching a game where she goes, she ends the game with a timeout. Like, I've never seen someone end games with timeouts more than Christy Sides. Never. But, yeah, as I said, once again, I mean, uh, Christy Sides is allergic to calling timeouts. She didn't call a timeout literally the entire second half until there was three minutes and 15 seconds to go in a five-point game. She does not call timeouts. It's it's becoming apparent that nothing you say can help her with timeouts. And I'm going to do a video, which I have not done yet, on the game on Friday, which I watched today finally. And I have to do a re response to that video because that's another game. She had four timeouts going into the final minute of that game. Not final quarter. The final minute. The woman is allergic to timeouts. She does not know how to stop a game. She does not know how to – she doesn't know how to get even create a play that, that works. I, I, I watch this team run the same shit over and over and over and over again. If it works, why do you stop? The backdoor pass with Aaliyah Boston to Kelsey Mitchell or Caitlin Clark to Kelsey Mitchell is there every game, over and over and over. That play they should run 10 times a game until someone stops it. Until someone stops that play, run it over and over and over again. And so they run it once or twice, and it works every single time. It's very rare that I've seen it not work. If it, if it didn't work, it's because it was a missed shot. But other than that, it works pretty much over and over again. You know, you watch these 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 plays in this game where, once again, people are dropping passes that, that create turnovers. Um, <clears throat> but this, of course, was a game that you expected. You expected the game with no defense whatsoever. And it's going to – look, end of the day, Indiana is deficient. Indiana is deficient defensively. And they're going to lose in the playoffs because they don't defend. That's what it comes down to. They're going to lose in the playoffs because they don't defend. Because the, this type, these types of starts, they're 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 bad habits. There's so there's just bad habit after bad habit after bad habit after bad habit. Because if you look at their ability, you look at what they did. The Las Vegas Aces scored eighty six and seventy eight. The Wings scored one hundred and nine points. Because you're not defending. Because you're just not defending. The defense is just so ungodly bad. And it's bad across the board. <clears throat> I keep saying it. Play a zone. Why won't they Why won't they play a zone? Look, both teams shot the ball exceptionally well today. Dallas shot 57% from the field and lost. Think about that. They shot 57% from the field and they lost. Indiana shot 50%. Indiana hit 16 threes. They needed every single one of those threes. 47.1 from the field, from three. Dallas was 11 for 24, 45.8. Free throw line was big for Indiana, 18 of 21. Uh, Dallas was 14 of 15. <clears throat> but defensively, it, like you're supposed to be a defensive coach, and that's what you that's what you claim to be, but you're not. You're awful defensively. You don't make adjustments defensively. You have the same utterly bad matchups defensively. I mean, it, it's it's game after game after game after game with this. It, it, it's it's just and the incessant the incessant crying and complaining. There was a there was a look. I get it. Caitlin Clark's getting fouled. I get it. I keep saying this over and over again. She needs to stop. She needs to stop. She's not going to help herself. It's not beneficial to getting calls from officials when you constantly are complaining about the calls or lack thereof. And, yeah, there was a driving layup where she got hit in the back of the head by Natasha Howard, I think it was, not it she makes the layup. <clears throat> it's on goal that she's doing this, while going on the floor. Stop doing that. Just stop doing it. I, 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 she can't possibly think that's beneficial. And this is where Christy Sides has to be a coach and say, like, Caitlin, stop. You're not helping. But, Christy, again, this is where you're supposed to step in and, and say, like, this can't keep happening, refs. She's getting hit on every play. She gets hit going to the basket every freaking play, and you don't call it. Nine free throws? I think three of those were off of technical fouls, or, or one was off of the flagrant. They, they, call, they upgraded to a flagrant, which I didn't, really, I didn't think it was a flagrant. I think that's a basic foul. <coughs> I think basketball is becoming so, so far too soft that you call every time a person challenges a ball and their arm happens to hit someone, and their arm, and their arm happens to hit someone across the face, the fact is, on that foul that they upgraded to a flagrant one on, on Clark, the girl blocked the shot. She hit the ball first. Her arm came down, blocking the shot. 
that's not a flagrant foul to me in any in any way. It's not a flagrant foul. Did it impact the game? No, because they turned the ball over on that next possession. Caitlin Clark throws the ball to Kelsey Mitch. Kelsey ball has moved right through her hands. Turnover. You know, I, overall, I mean, Natasha Howard killed Indiana 10 of 20 for 26 points, 10 rebounds. Offensive rebound. Let me tell you something. I mean, the numbers for offensive boards are actually 11 to 10, which is surprisingly close. 33 26 on the glass. Aaliyah Boston has to do a better job boxing out. She has got to do a better job rebounding. She is complaining all game long. I swear it looks like she's going to cry. There were at least three different times where I thought she was going to cry. She complains incessantly. Box somebody out. Please. You're 6'5", 220, 230. Box someone out, the love of God. I get it. Tierra McGowan's a big-ass girl. No question. But it wasn't just Tierra McGowan that killed y'all on the line on, on the boards. Natasha Howard had 10 boards. Sabali had nine boards. Natasha Howard had <clears throat> Natasha Howard had seven offensive rebounds. Seven. I don't remember how many were off of her own misses, but there were a lot of offensive rebounds that she grabbed in that game. She murdered y'all on the glass. Like it, it just it's too much. And the, the constant miss bunnies. Uncontested Miss Bunnies, it, it's just it's absolutely freaking crazy. Absolutely crazy. I I I it, it make it makes my stomach turn. It makes my stomach turn. You know, I I I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to see the constant, you know. I just don't want to see it. I just don't want to see it. So that said, I mean it's a it's an important win. Get them back on the winning track. But I have big concerns about this team. I, I mean, Caitlin Clark played a great game overall today, 35, 8, and 2, three steals. She was only plus on the on the of the starters. She had five turnovers, two in the final minute. Until that point, she played a very clean game. That last minute, she turns it over twice, just brutally bad turnovers. But she's got, but she played a clean game to that point. There are some threes that I wish she wouldn't take as quickly as she takes them. I thought she took a lot more than 14 threes, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> I thought she took more threes than she took. You know, but I'd like to see her drive more often. Still, she's four for eight from two. I'd like to see her go to the basket and take shots around the rim more often. That's how you get to the free throw line. You're not going to get to the free throw line. She took three free throws after a foul and a three-point shot. That's three of her three of her nine free throws. Like you're gonna get to the line a lot more driving to the basket than you are taking 30 footers. There was a stretch of this game where I saw Katie Lou Samuelson in the game for I mean 11 minutes. How is Katie Lou Samuelson playing 11 minutes in this game? I, I, I don't explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old. Why is she playing 11 minutes? mind-blowing but all that said huge huge win <coughs> a needed win Caitlin Clark breaks the all-time scoring record she extends her WNBA assist record and she keeps showing the world why she is the best player in the WNBA regardless of who wins the MVP she's the best most skilled gifted offensive player defensively she has stuff to work on but she is the most skilled and gifted offensive player in the WNBA and it's not close it's not close she does it all she finishes with eight assists she probably should have had 13 or 14 assists typical missed shots that are around the rim that should never be missed not by professionals those two by Lexi Hull and Aaliyah Boston are, are those types of misses can cost you games especially when you play the way the fever played. You cannot miss bunnies like that by yourself. It's not acceptable. And Christy Sides, I, I got plenty more for you um, in my video that I do on that recap of Friday because that was utterly disgraceful what you did on Friday. But that's all, that's all I got for this one. We will be showing you, giving you a lot more content. And uh, pardon my throat. I apologize for that. Thank you for your continued support of our channel. Like, subscribe, and follow. Ring that bell. Come on now.